Can exercise really help us with our MS? Really? You've heard me quote a study in other videos that says exercise may be the single most effective non-pharmacological symptomatic treatment for multiple sclerosis. Today, I'm going to share my recent experiences with increasing exercise, some tips to help us successfully exercise, and what's being said about exercise with respect to possible decreased relapse rates and possible remyelination from a researcher at the Brain Institute at the Oregon Health and Science University. I've been thinking a lot about exercise recently. Last month, I took part in a challenge to raise awareness about the 300 people a day that are diagnosed with MS worldwide and to raise funds for the Overcoming MS organization. This is a fantastic organization that helps people live well with MS, and I will put a link to them in the description below. For my challenge, I chose to walk 300,000 steps in the month of June with my pup, Bungie the Blue Healer. It was a stretch for me, as my average has been around 248 to 250,000 steps a month prior to the challenge. And in June? What was I thinking? Part of my symptoms are sensation loss in the left, especially my left leg, spasms, fatigue, con fog, and nerve pain sometimes when I exercise or get overheated. Again, doing an exercise challenge in June? What was I thinking? Oh, in doing my 10,000 steps a day, I definitely experienced increased sensation loss, spasms, you know, that stiff and heavy leg feeling, and pain on the bottom of my foot. Some days, I get back from my walk, and I take off my sneaker and look at my foot expecting to see blisters, because sometimes the nerve pain feels like blisters for me. But there were never any there. I'm lucky that my symptoms tend to settle down shortly after my exercise, or if I get overheated. And typically, within a few hours, I'm back to my baseline. At the start of the month, my fatigue was pretty bad. And again, I was thinking, uh-oh, what have I gotten myself into? But now that I'm on the backside, now that it's done, I can say that I feel better. The fatigue is better. I have more energy. My leg symptoms are still there, but they're a bit better too. I feel like I'm able to walk farther and faster than at the beginning of the month. And another thing happened. I'm able to do increased aerobic activity. I take Zumba class once or twice a week, and prior to the challenge, I was finding that I needed to leave the class before the hour was up. My leg would get stiff and heavy. I felt like I couldn't move it well, or I'd get that nerve pain on the bottom of my foot that became too intense. I'd have to stop dancing and excuse myself. I can now do the whole class. It's such a great feeling to finish a class with everyone else. Moving my body more and spending more time outside in nature made me feel better emotionally too. My mood is definitely better after 30 days of spending more time dedicated to outside movement. I recently did a video on the benefits of sunlight and I will link it above and in the description below if you'd like to check it out after this one. There are some things I do to help me when I exercise. I make sure to sip ice cold water during my exercise. This helps me to keep my body temperature down. I use a really good thermos by Zurushi that keeps cold things cold and hot things hot for hours or even overnight. I also have a cooling towel that I can use on the hot days. It's really great. I get it wet, I squeeze out the extra water, snap it, and drape it over my neck to keep me cool. During vigorous exercise, I use a cooling vest. I use the one by Therm Apparel, and I love it. It isn't frigid cold. It's discreet. I can wear it under my clothes. And it's really easy and fast to recool. I did a video review of it that I'll put a card above to and in the description below. I also have a coupon code for my viewers and I'll put that in the description too. We can also use cooling fans that wrap around our necks. They're lightweight and rechargeable. I'll put links to all of these products in the description below if you would like to check them out. We all know that exercise is good for us. It's critical for symptom management. There's some ongoing research showing that it may reduce relapses and it may also help us to heal after a relapse. It may help us to remyelinate. How cool is that? With MS, the myelin that surrounds our nerves gets damaged by our own immune systems. When this happens, it's called an attack or a relapse. We have an area of our brains or our spinal cord that gets damaged. This is called a lesion. 
after the attack, there's some healing that can happen. In relapsing remitting MS, this is the remitting part. Our bodies try to heal and some of the myelin may be repaired. The Brain Institute at the Oregon Health and Science University is currently doing research into how exercise may help us. And in June, Dr. Lindsay Wolliscroft presented information at a conference. In an animal study done on mice in 2018, with the mouse version of MS, they found this. Cuprazone is a, is a chemical that can um, induce demyelination. And then they watched them to see how well they did, they remyelinated these structures. And um, here you can see um, basically some pathology slides where they uh, took, they cut up the mice brains and then um, they looked at the amount of axons that got remyelinated and versus the ones that stayed unmyelinated. And uh, basically green is good. So green shows uh, remyelinated axons. And you'll notice that that was in the, the group of animals that were allowed to exercise on a running wheel. And then they compared that to a group of animals that were not allowed to exercise. So the control group. And what they found is that the exercisers repaired 87% of their axons compared to only 50% of the controls. 87% repair of the axons compared to 50%. That's amazing. Exercising, especially after a relapse, is important. Dr. Woolscroft went on to say this about exercise and relapse rates and symptoms. And in clinical trials, if you pull lots of people who've been in exercise groups versus control groups, it decreases the relative risk of relapse by 27%. Um, just for context, some of our, even best, even our first MS medications like Glatera or Capaxone or Interferons, Avonex, that class of medication, reduce the relative risk of relapse by 33%. So this isn't nothing. Uh, we also know that it improves walking speed and it helps you walk longer. It's one of our only proven therapies for fatigue. Um, it improves depression. So exercise may reduce relapse rates almost as well as some of the MS medications, can improve walking speed, improve fatigue, and improve depression. In the month where I pushed my exercise a bit farther than I typically do, I definitely felt these improvements. And when it comes to remyelination, there are some preliminary results that are really encouraging. We were able to look at the um, MRIs uh, right at the beginning of the study, and then six months later. And we looked at the change in the myelin content in this area of the brain called the thalamus, which is a really important relay station for pretty much everything. It's involved in fatigue, cognition, sensation, motor. It's just a, it's a railway station to the whole rest of the brain. And it's also one of the first areas um, that can remyelinate the fastest and the most robust in some of the other clinical trials that I showed. And so you can see some of the changes in that myelin content in the exercise group here in blue and the control group here in orange. And I just show this, I know it's a lot of different lines, but you can already sort of see that people who weren't changing their exercise routines, most of them stayed about flat over six months or had some decreases. Well, you can start to see a trend where the people who were exercising were starting to increase their, their myelin status. Increased myelin status? The fittest people had the biggest changes? Are you getting encouraged to exercise? I want more myelin, and I want to be more fit, too. She went on to talk about the changes in our metabolism and how it can help us repair as well. So perhaps there is uh, something where we can change the metabolism by making you healthier, making you more aerobically fit, working on those blood vessels that Dr. Silverman talked about that really can change that capacity for repair. And then unlike all these other drugs that are going to take, you know, decades to come out to you, um, any amount of exercise, you know, we don't know. Any amount of exercise may be able to do this. Um, and it, even if it doesn't change your myelin, it can help with all those other symptoms that we talked about. So, again, I'm, I'm, I'm a big preacher of aerobic exercise and those kind of lifestyle changes. If you'd like to see the whole conference, I will put a link to it in the description below. It's full of great information but it's also four hours long, so you may want to watch it over a period of time and break it up. Exercise can help us with our symptoms, but unfortunately, less than 20% of people with MS engage in recommended amounts of moderate to vigorous physical activity. It's recommended that we get more than 150 minutes per week of physical activity. 
I know it seems like a lot. It can be hard when we're not feeling well. But I encourage you to look for ways to increase your moderate to vigorous exercise. There are some amazing resources available online to help us with this. I will put some links to videos in the description below from Dr. Aaron Boster, physical therapist Dr. Gretchen Hawley, the MS Gym, and MS Workouts that you might find really helpful. After seeing this research, will you try to increase your exercise? Let me know in the comments below. If you find content like this helpful, could you do me the favor of sharing it with others or in groups that you're in that might find it helpful too? This is important because it helps support me and the channel and helps it to reach more people. Thanks. To see more on living well with MS and the benefits of exercise, watch these videos next. Until next time, be well.